Okay, let's start. So welcome everyone. Um, well, I assume most of you know what's going on, but just for maybe the few that may not be aware of the context of this uh, talk, let me just mention that this is uh, part of the MIP Frontiers uh, uh, training network. And as part of that, uh, there are uh, 15 PhD students that are um, uh, doing their PhD in different institutions, and there are different events that happen uh, to sort of uh, accompany them in their uh, education and training process. And this is one of them. Uh, so the whole week, um, we will have different types of activities for the students. Some are open, some are not. And today, uh, this is uh, open to everyone. I don't think there are that many people from outside the, the consortium, but uh, that was the intent that it could be. We are recording it, so we're gonna be putting it online for other people to also take advantage of that. And that's one of the uh, important things of this network is to produce content, to produce uh, sort of know-how that not only can benefit uh, the students of the consortium, but also can benefit other people that might be interested in this field. And uh, as most of you know, the idea of this uh, network uh, emphasizes PhD training with a bit of industrial context and collaboration with industries. Every PhD student has a secondment in a, in a company where they uh, are supposed to get some real experience in the industrial world. And the talks this afternoon are emphasizing that. So we have invited some of the partners that are involved in the project as industry. And uh, we also have the, the one of the talks of one of the <coughs> advisory members of the network. So the idea is to emphasize uh, this industrial act aspect and to get a view of that. But Simon will tell us all about that. Uh, Simon is the, is the PI of the project. So he will first introduce the project and then we'll have different yeah. talks and then we will introduce them at, uh, uh, then. Hopefully, Daniel, who is one of the speakers, will make it uh, by then. Uh, do we have any news of uh, Daniel? Uh, Alvaro is no, not no. here. No, no oh, news? He's flying, I think, so. He's flying, okay. <laughs> so that's good news, then he's, he's flying. <laughs> okay, um, and for the people that uh, might not uh, know, again, the, the context, on uh, tomorrow there is some sessions that are more internal and there will be the project officer coming and uh, we'll have some presentations for the, the, the European Commission uh, officer. And then on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, there will be some workshops, some presentations, and in fact, there will be talks that uh, people can attend, that's no problem. Uh, but there will be also hands-on sessions uh, between the students that uh, uh, will happen. And on Friday, hopefully, there will be some also presentations by the students on the things that they have done. And uh, that's also, it's a little bit informal, so hopefully th there is some timing, and in the schedule there is some timing. Uh, we wanna have dinner, so I'm not too late. We, well, uh, we shifted, of course, everything a little bit. The first schedule that I got uh, was everything shifted uh, earlier, and uh, here I start something at three o'clock, even it's too early for the afternoon. And so it's, for us, it's okay if things get delayed a little bit. But uh, let's not uh, disrupt the European uh, sort of uh, schedule and uh, let's try to be on time. So, all yours. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry to wake you from your siesta. Uh, okay, so, yes, yeah, so I'm Simon Dixon. I'm the PI of the MIP Frontiers Project, as uh, a lot of you know, because uh, many of you are involved. And um, thank you for, for hosting this meeting and doing all the kind of the on ground organization. Thanks to Xavier and the, the team, I guess, your students. Have been um, assisting to get all this together. So today we are focusing on kind of the in industrial perspective of, of MIR. We've invited some of our partners from the project to give us talks from, from their view of uh, MIR and or MIP as we call it as well, uh, music information, research, processing, retrieval, whatever word you want to put at the end of that, um, treat it as all the same. Um, okay, so for those who are not involved with the project, I wanted to give a brief overview just quickly of what is this about. This is a European funded project. Uh, it's a PhD training network for 15 PhD students who are all sitting here in this room, I hope. 
um, and it involves four universities. So that's Queen Mary University of London, where I come from. There's uh, Pompe Fabra um, here. There's uh, Telecom Paratech and uh, Johannes Kepler University in Linz. So the four universities, and we have three industry beneficiaries, uh, that's Sony, uh, Doremia, and Rolly, um, who I think are all represented here as well. And um, nine partner institutions who I can't possibly remember them all, but I know the Carry On Institute <laughs> is one since we have uh, Matthias sitting in the front here and he'll speak to us later on. Um, it's approximately four million euros of funding, so a reasonably large project and runs for four years starting from April last year. So about one year in, students started in between September and December last year um, and have been sort of all been working on the project for around six months, let's say. Um, unlike a standard PhD, the emphasis in, uh, in ITN, which is an innovative training network, it's also a, an ETN, which is a European training network, which is a subset of ITNs with some particular properties I can't remember. Um, the focus is on training on top of the research. Of course, a PhD is about doing research and achieving something novel and exciting and um, substantial. But alongside that, the European Commission wants us to focus on cross-sectoral training. So we're not just preparing people to live in an ivory tower and publish papers which only other people who live in ivory towers read. We are also working closely with, with industry and, uh, and also kind of cultural institutions to produce research which has an impact on the real world. So the cross-sectoral training is very important that people, that all of the students are involved in this um, working with somebody outside of the university. Uh, so between the university and, and industry and uh, cultural sector as well. We have regular network-wide events such as this week where we'll be having the summer school as Sadia already mentioned. And, and part of the idea of having this network is not just that so that we can all share out money that's given to us by the commission, but also that all of the partners can contribute. So we will get training from some of the partners in our um, partner institutions, such as the Carry On Institute today, um, and such as uh, Tito. And um, you know, so we have various companies involved. Um, there's there's Dore Mir later in the week will be uh, giving training on on music theory, and so. The knowledge and expertise that we have in various areas, whether it's the music industry or, or music theory or um, signal processing or whatever it is that people are good at, right, that all gets shared between the partners and between the whole um, consortium. Okay, what's very important, just for the, for the PhD students here who have to give a presentation tomorrow, really important that, that this project received funding from the European, this, this magic sentence, right, that goes on everything you always publish, everything you present, and this logo, which has to be at least the size of this logo, <laughs> all the EU rules. The project officer is coming tomorrow to check on us. So we have to be on our best behaviour. I'm just reminding you all, don't forget that bit. <laughs> OK, so what did we promise to do? Well, this is, this is text from the proposal. If you were at the kickoff meeting, you've seen this before. Um, these are some of the sentences we wrote. I just stuck them together to make a kind of a summary of the whole project. So standard methods for MIR aren't good enough, right? They're not robust, scalable. So we said we need to train a new generation of people to, to do things differently and to solve all our, all our MIR problems and bring together all these people in you know, cross-sectoral, European, whatever, all that stuff, right? To accelerate impact, right? change the world. Lots of good words there. This is how you get funding, right? If you want a lesson in how to get grant funding, these are the types of words you need to use. Um, yeah, so I'll talk more about the scientific focus in a, in a few minutes. Um, but the idea is that we've brought together all of these partners and we're going to work together in order to produce some world-changing research. So our scientific objectives, as I mentioned, it's about I mean, what we identified as problems, and admittedly that some of these ideas we wrote five years ago, um, but, but things don't change that fast in the real world. 
Right? In, in research, we're always thinking things are moving at a lightning rate. But, but the, the problems of scalability, robustness, of whether methods that we develop are actually applicable to other styles of music apart from Western pop music in 4-4 time with drums uh, and so on. You know, often we solve problems on a very small subset of, of the world's music and we think the problem solved as researchers because we got the pu paper published, right? And we succeeded. Um, so we wanted to go beyond that and, and we identified three directions we could take and obviously this maybe five years ago was felt new at the time to do and really focus on data-driven research. These days it's what everybody, everybody does and it seems so uh, obvious. But, um, but alongside the data-driven research, we also wanted to look at the idea of knowledge-driven work. So how do we incorporate other knowledge that we have, such as a knowledge of music theory, of how music actually works from experts in music? Can you incorporate that into a system that processes music, or do we just do signal processing machine learning and hope that the machine learning system works it out for itself? Um, and on the other side, of course, the need to do relevant work right, to address users uh, often gets forgotten in research as well because you don't need to have users to get papers published. And so researchers can <laughs> get on with the job and do, be very successful without actually solving a problem that anyone cares about. But here we're trying to also address um, the user-driven user side. Okay, so there was a list of things that we said were, we thought were relevant at the time, and we have various PhD uh, projects, which I, I won't go into much detail because uh, I think you know this is just background. Um, so to introduce the consortium, as I mentioned, the four universities involved: uh, Queen Mary, UPF. Uh, Telecom Paratech and JKU, Johannes Kepler University in Austria. Um, and then alongside there's the, the three beneficiaries. Now beneficiaries are people who get money from the European Commission. That's their secret code word to say these are the people who actually get the money. Uh, and so we're the kind of managing and, and as a result we're using this money to employ PhD students. So um, 12 of the PhD students are employed in the universities and three are employed in one in each of the companies. Um, but those who are employed by the universities also do an internship at some point with a company, not necessarily one of these, perhaps one of the partner institutions who are listed here. Um, and then those who are based in, in industry are doing a PhD at university, so they're still very much linked with the university and they will also spend time um, visiting and doing an internship or, or a secondment at the university. So those are the, the nine partner institutions, and as you can see, it's a, a wide range of, of kind of the, the streaming and, and uh, um, well, actually, you won't know all of the companies. Audionomics does source separation. Um, Native Instruments, of course, very well known in, in the music industry. Uh, BMAT is a local spin-out from, from uh, UPF. Um, but we'll let Emilio tell us what you, what you do later on. Um, but we've also got the cultural institutions. Vienna State Opera is world famous as a, uh, an opera house. Carrion Institute will have a talk from them later on. Um, so we have a mixture of, of SMEs, cultural institutions, and kind of large industrial players. Um, the students will be giving uh, brief presentations tomorrow, uh, but just to list them here and their topics to give you uh, an idea of what people are doing um, so working on singing voice transcription, instrument modelling, uh, again for transcription, uh, performance tracking, this is kind of uh, alignment of, of um, audio and scores. Uh, I think this topic's changed its name, but, but this was the original topic at least, <laughs> wasn't it? Um, so audio features, uh, again on audio features, um, tagging, so... Um, creating metadata for, uh, for music collections, um, another one on, on audio collections and ex expanding them, um, then some work to do with broadcast recordings, uh, behavioural music data analytics, I can't remember what that one's about, but Karen will tell us about that tomorrow. Uh, another uh, one on singing and 
vocals and lyrics. And then there is mu movies, um, music transformation. So this is um, producing music output, I guess, unlike you know, a lot of the kind of the analytical work. Um, and then uh, modeling studio production style. So that's a, quite a, a different area rather than looking at the notes played. It's looking at the, has it changed? Oh, OK, well, you can tell us about it tomorrow. This is what we promised to do. So we have to now explain it to the project officer tomorrow that we're doing something entirely different. <laughs> but as long as there's a good reason, that's fine. Um, and then finally, the, the two at JKU are looking at uh, multimodal music search and retrieval and uh, live tracking of complex musical works like operas. So those are our 15 projects, um, as, at least as we conceptualise them when we applied for the money. But of course, once students start working on them, they realise there are much better things to do and you know, the, the direction drifts one way or another. Um, before I pass on to Estefania, who will speak next, um, just a quick overview of what's happening today. So that was the, the project overview. Uh, we'll have a talk on application-oriented research um, from Stefania at uh, Fraunhofer, also at the A-Star Institute in Singapore. Um, and then um, we'll have uh, a talk um, on uh, MIR research for broadcast monitoring. And then we get a break. Hopefully after the break, or by that time, Daniel will have arrived. If not, um, Matthias will jump up one slot and uh, take over at, at 5 p.m. And finally, the last talk. So, so Daniel's talking about um, some work that he was doing uh, originally in his PhD, uh, doing user studies uh, on the web, and talk about how to do that and how to organize the, the whole process. And finally, Matthias has got a very provocative title about why the Music business is dead, uh, and and computational musicology is the way out. Yes, there's a solution. <laughs> it's not just it's not just all bad news. <laughs> he has a, a solution, but I didn't fit it on the slide. I was trying to fit the whole program on on the slide. So that's what we're doing today. For the rest of the week, in brief, tomorrow we have the midterm review meeting, uh, where we're meeting with the uh, project officer, and the day ends with the supervisory board meeting, and then Wednesday to Friday we have a, a summer school. Um, on uh, music theory and on uh, music data science, I guess, um, where we're doing kind of some theoretical and some uh, hands-on work. So are there any questions about anything, including from the students, if you have anything that's not clear? Um, I guess, Xavier, you'll tell us all the details about dinner and things like that later on. So, OK, so without further ado.